how to create millions of colorful images using the apply image command with video timelines in Photoshop. I've got an image here with two layers and these layers are video timelines. Video timelines, I can change this video time, just gonna move it along and as I do that, the image will change. And that means I can use it with apply image over and over again to create thousands and thousands of different designs. So with this, this one, please check out my earlier video on how to create these. You can go here. With this layer selected, or video timeline, I can duplicate it. So go to layer and duplicate layer. And you can see what happens. It gets created over here as well in the timeline. And we'll join in with, as I move that along, it will be used. Now, you can change blend mode. So here you can maybe use difference, but at the moment it's exactly the same as the one that's underneath, which is probably of not much use. Say if I go for soft light, but with that selected, I can go up here and I can say filter and distort and wave or any of the other distortions or maybe apply other effects as well or modify here in the timeline. You can modify that as well, but I'm just gonna go for a distortion. So you can just see there, I've got number of generators one, wavelength, you can just vary these settings, amplitude, and you can randomize. And I'm using repeat edge pixels. And you can see you can create millions of different designs just by using that. And so it's slightly different from the this layer. If you're gonna use it in apply image, you need to bundle it up or enclose it within a smart object. And I'm just gonna do that. So layer and smart object and convert to smart object. That's converted to a smart object. Now I can use that in the apply image. Now I'm gonna do that in a different document. Now the document needs to be the same size as this one. So whatever this is, 1920, etc. you can use, now this is obviously an image I created earlier, using exactly that timeline but I can continue using this one, or I can just create another layer. And that's what I'm gonna do. So layers, go to the layers panel, and go down here and plus. Just click the insert. So I've got fresh layer, edit, and I'm gonna fill it with black. You could fill it with gradients, images, patterns, any kind of design to start with. So I'm going with black. Now, go over here, and image, and apply image. I've got a shortcut for it. Command or Control M. Makes it easier just to quickly do that. So you get a different shortcut depending on what you want. Apply image. And you can see what happens. Brings exactly what I've got currently in the video time in this one. Because the key thing here is I select this file. Not this current file that I'm in at the moment. This is the video timeline one. So you can vary. You could build up maybe five, 10, 15 different files. Maybe one filled with type, maybe one filled with images, maybe sketch designs, pattern designs. You could have 15 different source files, all different things, which you can then select just from here and then use the layers. Now this is the merge, this is the combination of them all. But you can also just simply go here and you see I obviously made a copy of it, so distorted copy. It just uses that instead. You don't have to use the entire over here in this timeline file. And that is only at that point in time, two minutes in or whatever it was, that is what the image looks like. And it will use that. You've also got channels. Now I've got no channels. I've got red and green, blue, but I've got no additional channels, alpha channels. But you could have additional channels included there as well. With the layers, I'm just gonna select that one. You've also got blend mode, so it will blend with what was there before. Obviously, it was just a black screen. But you can go through this and decide, I want lighter color, which obviously would be in black, you're gonna get there. The first couple of pliers are gonna be much the same as what you've got already. Click OK. Now, you can always, at any point, go back to this. You don't have to keep it in the same position. Now, because you've got three yeah, video timelines and it's made up quite complex design, you've got lots and lots of distortions, lots and lots of keyframes, color changes, 
gradients, everything is in there. And you can always at any point just double click and go through them and change and tweak things. And you've got three of them. Of course, you could have 20 of them. Obviously, depending on your machine, you might be able to support more than that. But it does get a bit slow changing the time. So I'm just going to move it now. So I'll just move it along and you'll see it just takes a few seconds to process and move. Once it's done that, it will, there's another design. It's a pity there's no sort of random, select a random time. That will be really lovely. Sort of go up here, click random, and it'll just select a time for you. And you can just go through it, scroll through it. Now you don't need, and I've created three here, you don't need three. You could just use one, just one video timeline. So that's just as reasonable, that will speed it up. Obviously with three, it's a bit more of a combination, but you, then you've got the option for different blends here as well, and a lot of many other things as well you can do. So let's just go back now to this document. Now it doesn't change this document, just because I changed it there, it doesn't update this. This is not like linked as a smart object. Be nice if you could do that, but unfortunately it doesn't work like that. So you've got this layer, and I can gain image, apply image. And you can see now, I can go here, and I'm just gonna not go with that one, I'm gonna go with this one, distorted, or twirled, or merge. So if I select merge, you can see that design there. Linear dodge, let's just go through, maybe go for difference. So I've got that design, click okay. So if I go back, that's the design there. Let's just quickly change the zoom here. You can see that that's the design that was just used. So image, go back to that, you can see there, that's the structure. That, at that point of time, was being used for the ply image. Now I can use it again. You don't have to move the video playhead. It's just a great source of basically random designs. Because you can, of course, move it, manipulate it, use keyframes, so you can distort over time. You've got that distortion, combination of colors, how you transform it. All these things can be captured in the timeline. That's in the previous video, how, showing how to do that. So you can see it change and modify its position on the screen and how it combines as well. Again, image, apply image, and you can see the result there. And this time I'm gonna go for something else and maybe go for distorted there and you can combine that, pin light. And again, it's using that timeline one. Click OK. You don't have to keep this as this. This is just a still layer. There's no movements involved in this one. I can go to filter. I can go to distort. Wave. I can distort that one. Use exactly the same setting as it was before. Just number of generators, one. Sign, wavelength, amplitude. You can vary them. Just tweak it. I always prefer one. Just one is so much easier to control randomize and you can see the result there in that very very small preview unfortunately there is no on preview i'm not certain why they've missed that off but click ok so you can distort it you can also go to filter and stylize and oil paint click ok and so you can smear it a bit again apply image bring that back and you can combine that so distorted Go for distort, copy, RGB. Now you can also use the channels. So you don't have to use RGB. You don't have to use the full color. You can go for green or blue. And you can see the result there. So I'm just going to go with RGB, but you could use, well, let's go with that one. And let's change difference. Screen. I'm going to go with difference. I'm not saying that the colors often are beautiful. You can always undo, of course. Once you, if you click apply and you think, you know what, I don't like that, you can always undo. No reason you need to keep it. Uh, you can always go up to edit and undo. Again, filter, oil paint, just smear it in a bit. Again, go here and just select anywhere. Just go here. Of course, if you've played the film back, you know the general idea where things are you can see and that's why it's probably easy just to have one video timeline instead of adding complexity by just moving 
just slow it down a bit. So go here, gain, image, apply image, and you can see the result there. Distorted copy, there, twirled, red, RGB, and you can see the result. And I think that looks quite beautiful. So let's just click there and then go to wave or stylize, just again, just go there, oil paint. I'm using very low settings. I'm not going for extreme, it doesn't really make that much difference, but it, I think it looks just nicer, just going with three or four, perfectly reasonable, click OK. And you can always apply a couple of times. And always go to image adjustments, levels, if you want to just brighten it up. Sometimes the oil paint does sort of make it duller. So you've got that design. You've got two layers here. Now you could create another layer and do exactly the same, build up more complex imagery from that. And again, it could be type, it could be shapes, it could be anything, patterns, images, lots and lots of different options there. And you can always apply additional effects to this, but you can go over here to the layers and you can then go with say difference there or pin light or lighten. I think lighten always works nice. You can always see that just the underlying image and then you've got that lovely color all over the top. This is beautiful. And again, filter and oil paint. Oil paint and lighten seem to work really nicely. And you've got this design. And that's based on that apply image as well as using this, this timeline. And you can run through and maybe click there and create another image to use, something like that. Go back and then go image, apply image, and it's been applied to this one. Now you can, of course, just flatten it. Go here, layer and flatten image. So I'm just gonna flatten it all down into one image. And now go to image, apply image. And you can see the result there. That's the twirled, distorted, distorted copy, and that's in the timeline one. And you can see there and the merge. So that's what it looks like with the merge. And you don't have to keep a difference. Again, lighten, I think again looks great. I think after a while, I always find difference is really nice for the initial sort of creating a lot of different colors. Then I like to sort go with some of the others. So you can go through and see the soft light really works well. Or now hard, hard mix is a favorite as well. I love hard mix and I wish there were more like hard mix to make it like coarse, this sort of coarse threshold, well, less colors effect. I think it's just great. I'm always wondering why there's not a sort of alternate hard mix, an inverse hard mix. It could be loads of other ones. And you can always, of course, invert it. And you've also got this as well, add and subtract, which great, adds some great options for offset there. You can just move through there and tweak that. But I'm gonna go with lighten. Just with lighten again, using the merge, timeline one, RGB. Again, you could always go with red, which in this case always obviously leads to a gray scale. And blue, but you can get some beautiful strands and designs in this, and RGB. So click OK. And you can see, I think that's a good point to end. So layer, it's all been flattened. You can always apply some additional filters, stylize, oil paint, etc. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. If you've got any suggestions, any ideas about how maybe you could use video timelines in other ways, always great to hear as well. Thank you much.